What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is week 12 of the Locker Room, season five of the GBA, as we go over the team prep that the Giantes have for the Barusha Don fan this week. This is a rematch for us. It is a division rivalry. It is a conference rivalry, and there is a lot at stake right now. Uh, we've said it so many times throughout the season. The blue division is absolutely beastly, and uh, to put this in perspective, just how close and crazy this league is, if I lose this week and Dan wins this week and the differential splits seven points or greater, I actually don't make the playoffs. But if I win 6-0 this week, I win the entire division. <laughs> so that's kind of crazy that that's the case. Also, one of my friends pointed out, and I haven't done the math on this to verify whether or not it's true, but I think it is, if... I win 6-0 and beat Lars, and Fizz loses by, I'm not sure the amount, and Miguel loses, I actually win the entire league regular season. <laughs> I have the best record. So that is how crazy this group has been, that I'm competing with Lars, the current number one in the division, but I could beat him and be the number one in the division and or the league, or lose and not make the playoffs at all. That is how close it is. Meanwhile, in the other conference, there's the potential for someone to go through with only five wins this season. So um, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I, I love my conference, I love my division, and it's been an awesome season, and I'm really looking forward to this battle with Lars. So let's go over the team I brought, guys. As you can see on the left of the screen here, we're bringing Latias Ente, uh, Amoongus, Mega Pinsir, Blissey, and Ditto. And we're gonna go over the sets now. Cuddles, the Pinsir is coming, and he's not- this is not an unusual set for me. I know I'm not super creative with the Pinsir and the Entei set, and I get a lot of flack for that, but there's a very specific reason for that. The things they do, I need them to do super consistently, and it's the other Pokémon that sort of set the stage for them to shine. Uh, Pinsir does have the potential to run some off-the-cuff kind of sets, uh, moves like x Scizor, which would be good against the Slow King, or um, I, a couple of other tricks, you know, I know he learns Faint um, as the increased priority move, but I don't need to stray from the mold here. Return hits hard, has no drawbacks to it, quick attack for priority in case I need it against faster threats, Earthquake because it covers the uh, Luxray, which is probably coming, the Cabalion, and, uh, you know, just other things to give me additional coverage. And then Swords Dance, because if I find the opportunity to set one up, like what happened last time, it can win me the game. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to stray too far with the Cuddle set here. The Entei set, also very, very similar. Sacred Fire Extreme, Speed, Stone Edge, Toxic, just to cover Pokemon that would otherwise resist everything else or not do much. Uh, the Slow King being a good example of that. Um, we have a Ditto. Ditto's coming back, guys. I love Ditto. <laughs> I love Ditto so much. And Ditto's going to play a big part this week, guys. Um, I'm actually going to stop my side of the... That's my side of the uh, of the team analysis at Ditto and go over what I think that the Barusha Dawn fan are going to be bringing. And I have it kind of ordered directly above me here um, in the... In, in order of what I think is likelihood. So uh, I, he's got to be bringing that Landorus. He, he just absolutely has to. He's brought it every week. It's an Uber that for some reason we didn't ban out because it didn't get drafted last season. Uh, whatever. <laughs> um, he didn't bring the Azumarill last time, which I thought was a mistake on his part. I think he's going to bring it this time. Uh, it's a really good switch in, actually, to my offensive Pokemon uh, namely the Entei and the uh, and the Pinsir. It's a pretty good switch into those, actually. Its priority hits really hard. It can run a lot of different sets, um, which I'll have to scout for really early. And it, it's just in general, it's a it's a freaking powerhouse, man. So I really think it's coming this week. The Crobat, I think, is coming again. It ran a very effective set last time uh, with U-Turn, Brave Bird. Taunt and Roost, and I think he'll bring a pretty similar set. 
Uh, he had safety goggles on it last time, and I didn't even end up bringing Amoongus. I think it's possible that he might have safety goggles on it again, just because it's a really good Amoongus uh, check. I think he brings the Slow King again. I think physically defensive Slow King. Last week, it put in so much work against me. Absolutely so much work. And uh, I didn't have an amazing answer for it. This week, uh, I think I have a lot better answers for it. The Mega Absol. I'm saying he's going to bring it because he's brought it every week, but I really want to emphasize, guys, that this thing does not do that great against my team. That doesn't mean it doesn't do anything, but pretty much any generic filler offensive mon in that slot would probably be pretty effective. But if he brings Fire Blast on a mixed set against Amoongus, it still isn't a two-hit KO. His physical attacks against my Amoongus aren't going to do too much. I'll go over the Amoongus set in a second, but I, I just... Last week, or last time I battled him, Nato Nato completely walled him. Walled the tender living garbage out of him. It is, however, effective in the sense that it's a, it's a, very, it's a very good pursuit trapper, and uh, the magic bounce is good. So I think he brings it for those reasons, not necessarily for the offensive reasons. I know in his last team builder, last time we battled, he mentioned that I don't really have any dark resists, and that's true, uh, very true, but uh, at the same time, uh, I don't really have any weaknesses to it. I did end up bringing a weakness this week, actually, so we'll go over that. The next two Pokemon, I I'm kind of tied for which one he could bring. Actually, the next three. Uh, the Luxray, the Drudagon, and the Cabalion are additional checks to Entei and or Pinsir that could potentially come. The Luxray came last time, and he used it very effectively. This time, I think he could bring in, I think he could bring an Intimidate set. Last week, or last time we battled, he did not bring a Scarf on it. I th I think he ended up bringing, like, an Assault Vest. I, I think he brings a Scarf this time. I really do. I'm just doing the calcs on my own. I think it's a really effective set for him to bring, but we'll have to see whether or not it ends up coming. Drudagon serves a very similar purpose in that it can check those Pokemon because of Rough Skin and Rocky Helmet. And the Cabalion checks them because it can outspeed both of them, it has massive defense, and it can pack uh, super effective coverage for both of them also. And in general, fighting types are pretty good against my team. Scallopede, just in case he wants to try some Baton Pass shenanigans, you can never rule it out as a possibility. Delphox, it surprised me that he brought it last time. It didn't do a whole lot. It tricked my Vaporeon, which didn't end up really influencing the game at all. And then the Tangrowth, which is a physical monster that can't stand up to my physical threats. And if it's a special, def especially defensive assault vest variety, it can't stand up to my physical threat. So I don't really see the point of him bringing that outside of desperately wanting to get a sleep powder off on something or, or you know, something along those lines. So uh, that's the 11 he has. Let's continue going on here. The Ditto is an amazing switch into Landorus, and I really want to hold on to that. It's also a great check for the Azumarill if it's a belly drum set. If it is a belly drum set, I can switch in on it and take that plus six and then maybe count, potentially counter sweep his team. Other things worth noting, um, you know what, I want to I want to go back over this uh, this Azumarill for a second. If the Azumarill is some unique set like Power Up Punch Substitute, it's going to be kind of difficult for me to deal with. Um, well, it depends on the scenario. Um, but it has the potential to be pretty difficult. The Azumarill in general, it's going to be really important for me to know it's set as soon as possible. Ditto is going to go a long way in helping me check that Pokemon along with several others that I have on the roster here. Um, so I'll continue going over them. Blissey is my big set this week, guys. This is my... I know you guys come to the channel for my sets, and this is, this is it this week, guys. It is an impish... Fling Seismic Toss Toxic Soft Boiled Set carrying a Flame Orb. Some of you, it just clicked right away, but others of you, I will explain right away. Eggington is the perfect Fling Flame Orber because what Fling does is it throws away your item and it does a certain amount of damage and or has an effect based on the item you're holding. If you fling a Flame Orb, it poisons the target, uh, uh, burns the target, and here's why that's so significant. Potential lead options for him. Um, the Crobat. The Absol. 
and any potential hazard setter, including Landorus, Drudagon, Cabalion, or maybe Scallopede. Any of those guys, I would love to burn. Um, none of them can one-shot this set with a superpower, uh, barring an adamant, full full physically offensive Landorus. Uh, it's unlikely a bring. It could be a bring, a bring but I don't think that's going to happen. And all of them, they, they need like additional, uh, need, they need early damage on the Eggington. And I can fling the Flame Lord at them and get a burn and that can be huge for me. Eggington is going to be a really important Pokemon for me in that it can check the specially offensive Landorus uh, even better if I get the burn on it in the first place. That said, there are some negative scenarios here that, that don't work out great in my favor, but um, in general, it's I'm really excited by this set. My prediction is the top six of the Pokemon he ends up bringing may be the Luxray for the Drudagon or the Cabalion. That would not surprise me, but the top five certainly are brings. And if he sees this team and he sees a Blissey lead, I anticipate a Crobat lead, and I anticipate a turn one taunt, meaning I get a burn off on it. If he opts to lead with the Mega Absol, I have, I'll have a decision to make as to whether or not I think he's going to go for Super Power turn one or the safe knockoff. If he goes for the knockoff, I would lose the potential to get a Fling Flame Orb off on him. So I'll have to decide about that in the future. It's going to be a tough. Uh, it's going to be a tough call. But uh, I really am excited by the idea of being able to get Blissey to burn something. Uh, I think it will go a long way to improve Blissey's ability to wall several of them on on this team. And it provides me with potential setup opportunities for my Mega Pinsir. Namely, Crobat is an, a great offensive check to Pinsir, but burned with a support set, it's not able to knock out Pinsir with two Brave Birds, meaning I get a free Swords Dance off on its face, potentially even a second, and then I can either Quick Attack or return my way to victory as such. So this is my crazy set this week, guys. Uh, it's running Seismic Toss because I want to break subs if they try and set up and I don't want to be uh, Taunt Bait forced to spam Fling. <laughs> uh, toxic, because mostly for the mostly for the slow king i was considering covet here to try and steal life orbs away from uh landorus um or something along those lines and soft boiled because wish by itself won't do the trick and uh i need the reliable recovery next we have the trip the amoongus amoongus is running a bold max defense max hp rocky helmet set with sludge bomb giga drain hidden power and spore the reason not clear smog this week is I actually would like him, the, the Pokemon that's set up against the team, I would like him to set up with so that I can get those setups on Ditto. Uh, Sludge Bomb is the primary attack of choice against the Azumarill, and in general, this is my Azumarill check. Uh, if the Azumarill is not holding a choice band, it cannot two hit KO Amoongus. If it is holding a choice band, the only way it can two hit KO Amoongus is if it has Ice Punch. If it has Ice Punch, locks into it with a choice band, I can switch in decisions on the next turn and kind of eat that up. Um, or I could switch into Ditto and mimic him, not be locked into Ice Punch and go for an attack that actually suits me better. So yeah, it is a good check for that. And also in, in switching in, noticing immediately the choice band damage, I can, uh, I can get most of that back with switching out with my regenerator. Rocky Helmet means that he will take additional damage. Uh, other fun facts, Azumarill's really going to suffer from four move slot syndrome against me because if he opts to pack Ice Punch to try and have something against Amoongus, it'll only work if he's choice banned. Otherwise, he kind of puts himself in a bad situation unless he's making really smart doubles. His other moves he needs to be really careful with. He'll probably bring Waterfall. It's a good move against a lot of the team. He'll probably bring Play Rough because I don't really have a Fairy Resist. And then what's his fourth move? If it's not Super Power, then he can't really kill Blissey that well, uh, barring being locked into Choice Band Play Rough. Um, 
which I think is what he would lock himself into. It could be Belly Drum, but then again, that means he doesn't have uh, he doesn't have Aqua Jet, which means I'm able to come in freely and um, out prioritize him just with speed, not having to worry about anything else. So he really does need to be very careful with that. The thing is about, and I think why he didn't bring it last week is that he has the Slow King and he doesn't want to double up on water types, but uh, I'm not bringing, if he if he sees through my my thinly veiled guys this week and brings both of them, uh, he will notice that I don't have any lightning attacks, uh, lightning, electric type attacks on this team, and my only grass type is um, Trip with Giga Drain, which um, is not going to be doing too, too much to that Slow King. So we'll have to wait and see about that. The last Pokemon I'm bringing this week is the red one. It is Dragon Mind Call, or Dragon Pulse Calm Mind Defog Roost set. It is a modest uh, set with max HP. Uh, I believe it's 148 defense and 108 special attack. Very specific set. The special attack investment allows me at uh, plus one, uh, if I pop off one Calm Mind, to one hit KO the Mega Absol. Um, I am not bringing leftovers on this. This is a mistake. This is a mistake, and I need to take that off. He is not bringing leftovers. I am bringing a Colber Berry, allowing me to survive one attack from the Mega Absol, and then KO it back with the Dragon Pulse, barring it being a defensive set. So, uh, this is a guaranteed one-hit KO. It's 100% to 118%. So even if he does have some HP investment, at best he drops that down to maybe a 50% chance to Oko. Uh, that would be unfortunate if he does do that and, and, and all that. But uh, it would put him down so low that he wouldn't be able to follow up, kill anything like the Entei could extreme speed him to death or something along those lines. The Mega Emo, I have other answers to, but it would be really nice if it if it went down and the red one could get up a couple of Calm Minds. So, uh, yeah, this the red one is also a good switch into the Luxray. Even with HP Ice, it shouldn't be doing all that much to me. It's a good switch into the Crobat, who can't really hit it very hard, barring it being a, um, a Choice Band set. Could be Nasty Bat, but I don't think it's going to be. It is a decent switch into the Landorus also with the Colber Berry. If it has, if the Landorus has Knock Off, it shouldn't hit me too hard, um, allowing me to set up a Calm Mind on its face potentially, or roost off the damage, depending on what I think's uh, what I think is coming in next. Uh, it could be bad if he's Knock Off U-Turn and I switch in on the Landorus on the Knock Off, lose the Colber. He goes for a U-Turn and brings in the. Uh, Mega Absol because I only get one move in this scenario and I'm not sure exactly what I would do with it um, But I think the better answer I have to the Landorus as a switch in is Blissey first turn and then anticipating the follow-up Superpower I switch into Ditto become the Landorus and uh, and move on like that So that's gonna be the team this week guys uh, Lars has been waiting really patiently I had some issues finding a Jenner so I want to say thank you to Gearheart who um, do any of my which one of my Pokemon? There we go, Gearheart. Thank you for generating my Pokemon this week, buddy. I really appreciate it. Um, and you know what? I, I think at the end of the season I'll do a shout out to all the other people because some videos I forget to give shout outs. I appreciate you all, everyone who's ever gened a Pokemon for me. So uh, that's gonna be it this week, guys. Week 12 in the making. I am nervous, but uh, I'm also excited. I'm nerve sided, boys and girls. We are gonna go up against the Barusha Dawn fan, and we're gonna take this to the playoffs i'm excited let's do this baby let's go giantes as always my name is jim leader geo you guys are the challengers thanks for stopping by and i'll see you guys next time